Whenever anyone says that the media is biased, our first reaction is something along the lines of, well done. I mean, CNN will do anything for the Democrats and Fox News might as well be owned by the GOP. <laughs> However, the question is, how does this get done? Frequently, news groups just cherry pick scenarios and quotes to leave their reader thinking a certain way. The one constant is that in every article, whether it's dripping in bias or objective, subconsciously or consciously manipulates words to leave you more inclined to believe what the writer believes. I'm here to talk to you about the ways reporters intentionally use words to subtly shift our opinions. All it takes is a single word to change your opinion. And by the, you finish the article believing what the writer wants you to. Don't believe me? Check this out. Here are the titles of two news articles. On Thursday, a defenseless African-American teenager was shot and killed by a white police officer. Or, on Thursday, an African-American teenager was shot and killed by a police officer. Two articles about the same event, and yet with a few little words, they leave you with drastically different opinions. There are two words in particular that I want to focus on. They are defenseless and white. Defenseless paints the wounded man as the victim, which might not be the whole story. And white brings in the idea of racism and police brutality. That's why these are intentionally included in the first and not in the second. These articles are dangerous because they will appear to be objective. They will include opinions from both sides and then draw a conclusion. This objectivity is dangerous because it is a facade. And it makes one think that the article is nothing but the truth, it is objective, and it is or it is nothing but the facts, it is objective, and it is true. And that's the genius of it. See, we are so caught up in the macro level truth that we miss the little details that subtly shift our opinions. Words. Authors intentionally use words in specific places to slightly change our opinion one way or another. And it happens hundreds of times in every article so that by the end of it, the reader or listener's opinion aligns with the author's. And every news source does it, from the Huffington Post and the Atlantic to the New York Times and NBC. I think my favorite example of this comes from a grassroots organization dedicated to catching the bias of other news sources, named AIM. I love this because of the sheer irony of it. An incredibly biased news article calling out other news groups for being biased. <laughs> the entire article is incredibly biased throughout, but this sentence in particular is noteworthy. It is arguably misleading that the Times did not further elaborate on McEntee's flawed claim that unions and jobs are not connected. Now, when I read the actual article, the claim that Mr. McEntee is saying that unions and jobs are not connected is not only false, it's downright stupid, because the entire purpose of the article is to talk about their connection. Also, the article's deliberate use of phrases like flawed claim cast doubt not only onto the claim, but Mr. McEntee himself. And the first half of the sentence is also structured in a clear attempt to discredit the New York Times and make this look like some egregious error on their part, which it is not. In fact, the entire article is littered with anti-New York Times rhetoric. The title is, The New York Times Praises Unions Once Again, which is a clear attempt to skew the reader against the New York Times. However, this is by no means something that only happens on one side of the political spectrum. CNN is also incredibly biased. They're just more subtle about it. Take this article from 2008 by a White House correspondent named Ed Henry. He opens the article like this. Before departing the White House early Monday for a farewell tour of Europe, President Bush stole a page from his predecessor and suggested he feels American consumers' pain. Now, Mr. Henry says that Bush suggested, says that Bush stole a page from his predecessor. Not took, but stole, which has definite negative connotations. Additionally, Bush suggested that he feels American consumers' pain. Using suggested there implies detachment and a certain degree of falsehood, almost as if Bush did not actually care about Americans. Now, I could present more and more examples to you, but the fact is, I don't have to. You do it. Do it today when you look up the news. Do it tomorrow when you're flipping through channels. This is by no means a unique or isolated occurrence. It happens daily. 
Given the clear presence of this issue, it becomes obvious that the question we should be asking ourselves is why. Why does this happen so often? And it does. After examining after one, over 100 articles, I found that every single one, to some degree, is biased. And all of them use language to make their bias much subtler. And not only why does this happen, but also why do I care? In regards to the first question, the answer is actually quite simple. It is impossible for us, as humans, to entirely separate ourselves from our opinion. See, even in a community that cherishes objectivity above all else, there is an inherent bias that is inseparable from the human. And that is why reporters cannot be impartial. Because even if all they are doing is reporting the facts, in their accounting of the facts, their biases will seep into their language and subtly shift your opinion one way or another. And that leads me into the next question. Why do I care? Rhetoric matters. If I were to go back and add the word maybe or probably before every claim I was making, it would make you doubt the claims I made. The same goes for news groups. When they use words like that, they cast doubt. Since the establishment of the media, people have depended on it to tell them about what is going on in the world. Because quite frankly, we can't experience the news firsthand. Therefore, we are dependent on their account. And it is imperative that we know the truth. If we hear, constantly hear news that is false, then we are drastically ill-equipped to deal with the challenges of the future. Take climate change. Let's say that you read an article that denies the existence of climate change, calls it a hoax made by the government. Then you go to work, school, etc., and tell your friends, I read this fascinating article about how climate change was invented by the government to take American or to take our money a logical conclusion that the author of the original article wanted you to draw. Then, your friends don't bother to look it up, so what was once false becomes evil tale to steal from Americans. If we all start to believe this, then we are drastically ill-equipped to deal with climate change, which becomes a greater threat every day we wait. This is so prevalent because people are so used to getting their bias from one source or another, that they're incapable of seeing the bias that their preferred news source has. This means that when people read an article from their chosen news source, they think a certain way about a certain issue. Their opinion on something is shifted ever so slightly, unless that shift is challenged by, say, checking the facts on another no news group. It will grow and grow until you are totally convinced something is true that is completely false. And the sad fact is, there's no real solution to this problem. The, as I previously stated, there is an inseparable bias that is inherent in all humans. The only thing that can be done is not some drastic reform on the media's part, but rather to change ourselves. First, you must acknowledge that every single news group is biased. By acknowledging this, you become aware, and that is half the battle. Because if you become aware, it becomes much harder for it to affect you. Its danger comes from you being unable to detect it. However, simply being aware is not enough. You too must read articles from multiple news sources. If you want to read something that is unbiased, you will either never read anything, or what you do read will be so shallow and boring that reading it will be a complete waste of time. If you get a news folder on your phone, then you get news from several different sources, and you should read articles from all of them. In other words, fact check. But instead of being concerned with the macro level truth of the article, pay attention to the different rhetoric used in each. This will create a truly well-rounded opinion. And do not limit yourself to major or conventional news sources. But when reading articles from less renowned sources, it becomes important to macro level fact check. If you want to gain an unbiased opinion about something, all you have to do is Keep your eyes and ears open for this sort of bias and be willing to truly research and learn about something. Thank you.